Okay. It is seven o'clock. It is February 9th, 2023. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the town board of the town of Northeast. I'd like to uh, ask you to join me in pledging allegiance to the flag of the United States. It's okay, Ralph. <laughs> I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and with the small liberty and justice for all. Okay. Not signing in. All right. Um, we're going to. Do a roll call before we do the roll call. If I could ask our make sure our guests have signed into the guest to the uh, sign in sheet, which is at the board board table, end of the board table. Um, Tilly, could you conduct a roll call for us? Supervisor Cannon here, Councilwoman Morrison here, Councilman Fidelli here, Councilman Midwood here. Thank you. Um and the next item is to uh, is the acceptance of the agenda. I've amended the agenda to reflect the minutes of the meeting of January 19. 19. Uh, so that we'll be asking the board to approve uh, the minutes of January 12th and the minutes of January 19th. With that change, I'd like to um, ask for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, thank you. Uh, we now have an unusual opportunity for, for us, which is the opportunity to fill a vacancy on the town board. Um, as most everybody knows, um, Griff Cooper was elected to the board um, a year and a year and a half ago, something like that. Um, and served one year on the board and then because of moving to Connecticut was not able to continue to stay as a councilman in the town of Northeast New York, uh, creating a vacancy. And it is incumbent on the town board to fill vacancies on the town board. And we've posted the vacancy and I've written about it and it has been well covered. And the board has had the opportunity to uh, invite people to submit names and we've interviewed uh, people who had that interest. And um, we have gotten to the point of being able to make this appointment. And uh, I would like to make a motion. It's rare that the supervisor gets to make a motion, but actually it turns out the supervisor can make a motion anytime the supervisor wants. Uh, uh, having read the town law manual quite carefully on this item, uh, I would like to make a motion uh, to appoint Meg Winkler uh, to fill the unexpired term of Councilman Griff Cooper. So I, move. I approve the motion. Um, there is a resolution which um, I will ask Tilly to, uh, to read. Resolution appointing Meg Winkler to fill the vacancy and office created by the resignation of Councilman Griffin Cooper. Whereas Councilman Griffin Cooper was elected to a four-year term of office on January 1st, 2022, and whereas Councilman Cooper's term in office expires on December 31st, 2025, and whereas Councilman Cooper has submitted his resignation to the town clerk as Councilman effective January 31st, 2023, and whereas the town clerk has accepted the resignation and the town board has on January 12, 2023, acknowledged the resignation of Grip Councilman Griffin Cooper. And whereas the town board has considered qualified persons to fill the vacancy of Councilman Cooper in accordance with provisions of section 64.5 of New York state town law and have identified Meg Winkler as a person so qualified, 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby acknowledges the resignation of Councilman Griffin Cooper as Councilman for Town of Northeast, effective January 31st, 2023, and be it further resolved that the town board hereby appoints Meg Winkler to fill the vacancy of Councilman Cooper until December 31st, 2023. Okay, having heard uh, a motion and the motion's been seconded. Could you conduct a roll call? Yes. Supervisor Cannon? Aye. Councilman Fidelli? Aye. Councilman Midwood? Aye. Councilman Morrison? Aye. The resolution carries. Great. Aye. Four zero. Meg? Thank you. Now we're going to do it. We're now going to. Swear you in, yeah. so that you can be fully, uh, fully vetted, and everything is uh, by the book. So I think you should raise your right hand. Um, I, Meg Winkler, do solemnly swear. I, Meg Winkler, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and New York. And that uh, I will faithfully discharge the duties of town councilwoman. And I will faithfully discharge the duties, duties of the town councilwoman, councilwoman of the town of Northeast. Of the town of Northeast. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You can hold them. Yes. Thank you. Take a seat next to me. One, not one more, but another one. Congratulations. Thank you. I just need to switch the order around a little bit. My comments. Um, <laughs> Uh, first of all, a warm welcome to Meg Winkler. We are delighted to have you join the town board. Uh, so many people know you from your tireless voter registration efforts at the farmer's market. Um, and we on the town board know you from your tireless advocacy for actions to create more affordable housing. We know you as a worker, somebody who rolls up her sleeves and get, gets to work. And I promise you, we will have plenty of work ahead. At the last board meeting, um, I announced that the New York State had approved, uh, has approved the lowering speed limit on Winchell Mountain Road. I drove that road today and I don't see any speed sign, reduced speed signs up. And um, I have been in touch with Dutchess County who's supposed to be putting them up and I will continue to pursue them because I don't quite understand why they haven't gone up. Uh, for those who've been following this saga, it is it is a, a case study in how long things can take. Uh, I think the first time, and it was uh, Meg and Daniel Goldhagen who came to, to us and uh, notified the board, this is back really when George Kay was supervisor, um, of the dangerous conditions on Winchell Mountain, especially in the wintertime, with a 55 mile an hour speed limit going down quite a steep hill in bad weather. And uh, anyway, I just, I want you to know I'm still on it. Thank you. And I will not rest until we get those signs up. Mm -hmm. um, last year, the town partnered with Northeast Community Center to seek a grant being offered by the Foundation for Community Health, facilitated by Hudson River Housing, to address housing insufficiency in our community. We put together a small task force, including Christine Surgeon from NECC, uh, Edie Greenwood, Vice Chair of the Town's ZBA, former Councilman Griff Cooper, Paul Benson from NECC, and our new council person, Meg Winkler. And we were assisted in our by our consultant, Nancy Stoltenberg, who many of you will recall uh, helped us and the village with a comprehensive plan. Uh, we spent much of 2022 working on the, what tools are available to small rural towns like ours to encourage and, encourage and facilitate more housing. The report is out. It's available in both electronic and printed forms, and it, you can find it on the town website. The state has, has been uh, talking a lot about uh, housing uh, recently. The governor has announced a plan to, for the construction of 800,000 units of new housing 
over the next 10 years. And we are looking forward to hearing uh, how that uh, is going to roll out from the, from the state. Um, the Tri-Town Coalition, uh, which uh, we have been a part, has also applied for a grant and they put together a housing expo, which will be held at the Northeast Library Annex for three days, starting February 18th at 10 a.m. and continuing the following day, Sunday, and through Monday, so for three days. And I will be sending out um, a supervisor email next week regarding the, uh, the whole housing issue, actually, and I will include details of the exact times of the expo, and I hope everyone will make an effort to attend it. Um, also, in my supervisor email, uh, will be mention of the very pressing concern for the future of Sharon Hospital. Uh, New Vance, which runs Sharon Hospital, has made a proposal to do away with the ICU intensive care unit at the hospital. This is on top of their efforts last year to, to close the maternity unit at Sharon Hospital. And as I shared with the board, um, I have appeared several times over in Sharon at uh, rallies that they had there. The town passed a resolution uh, opposing the closing of the maternity unit at Sharon Hospital. And next week, there is going to be, <clears throat> so, so there are two things. One is the maternity unit, and the second is the ICU, which they want to downgrade to a PCU, a progressive care unit, which means literally half the nurses in that unit. And so it goes from, from a nurse for every two patients to a nurse for every four patients and with less capability of handling other things. It's something which has been a concern to many people in our community about we need Sharon Hospital. Um, next Wednesday, there's an opportunity for public comment and I will get the details of that out. People will be able to comment by Zoom. You can sign up for a slot and you can comment there or you can submit uh, comments in writing. And I, I hope everyone will uh, take the opportunity to do that. Um, at our next town board meeting in March, um, I'm hoping to have a discussion of agricultural assessments, agriculture assessments. Um, it's really an opportunity for the town board to learn more about what they are, um, what they do, who can get them, and uh, what their impact is on the town. This is not this is not neither for or against assessments. It's just because they're one of those things you hear about, and um, I think it's interesting for us to know more about the various types of things that the town uh, offers. And this is a, a state a state program. Um, Lastly, uh, there is a uh, one of the very small projects that got worked on this past year was to get a the town seal, which had been very degraded over the years uh, by it being copied over and over and over again. And each time it got copied, it got fuzzier and fuzzier. Uh, so we, we've, uh, thanks to Kathy Chow, we located somebody, the graphic artist who's uh, been able to give us the same seal, uh, but sharpened up and particularly sharpened up with the with the image, which is the image of an old iron mine. Uh, in Wall the piece furnace. Okay, uh, so that's what it is. Uh, you'll you'll see, if you close observers of town government will notice a much sharper seal. Um, with that, I would like to ask for public comment on agenda items only. There'll be another public comment in the period at the end. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I would uh, then we'll move on to department and committee reports. Uh, start with Bob Stevens, our highway superintendent. I have an agreement to expenditure of highway monies for the board to consider. Looking to have section one general repairs approved tonight. A total of two hundred forty thousand dollars. This is the. Uh, it has a, a name. This two eighty four. This is the two eighty four agreement, which is a routine agreement that we are required to do in order 
for you to keep our roads good. Right. So, um, and I think we passed around some paperwork for that, but um, yep, but I would like to um, entertain a motion uh, to approve the two the two eighty four the two eighty four agreement for the highway department of the town. So moved. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, anything else uh, of note? Where's, no, where's no, the snow? No, I don't have a snow. It's a little <laughs> icy on the night, early morning, but uh, not too much snow going on. Uh, that means that the sand and salt that you've got stored up there is just sitting there. Just hanging around. Yeah. Well, you know, the winter's not over. No. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, so far, it's been remarkable. Uh, so I presume as a result of that, that all the plows are in great shape <laughs> and everything else uh, hopefully is running smoothly. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, next, we turn to our assessor, Captain Johnson. Hello. So just briefly, my usual February spiel is that uh, exemption deadline is coming up March 1st of every year. All exemptions new and renewed are due. Um, the annual renewals are based are on income-based exemptions, which are uh, nonprofit exemptions, uh, senior exemptions, and agricultural exemptions are all based on income. Um, and so those are annually renewed. So we always send them out uh, renewal notices uh, towards November or December of the previous year. So they have plenty of time. Um, so we're just getting, putting out a last notice that exemption deadline is coming. Um, one notable thing this year for these seniors is that at the end of the year, the government hope will sign into law a new requirement uh, for all municipalities to send out a second notice. And the first notice being on a property tax bill, but a second notice to all residential property owners of the existence of the senior, the low income senior tax exemption availability. Obviously, it doesn't apply to everyone, but the, the way the law, law read, we had to inform everyone. Uh, and so, and also the deadline to do that was 30 days before taxable status day, which is March 1st. So it was coming up fast, really quick. Of course, every town was flustered, didn't know what to do with this new requirement. And fortunately, the county uh, real property tax office um, and county finance uh, decided to get the ball rolling. They produced and printed and mailed out postcards uh, with the required notice to every resident and property in the county for us. So, and the county put it to bill. I don't know if they're going to. Send you the bill later, but at this point they put in the bill and they took care of everything. So that was great. Uh, and those went out last week. So this week has been kind of hectic with people calling, coming in, wanting to know a little bit more because the, the uh, no card was quite basic. She said, Hey, call us if you want more information. Um, so we've been inundated, but uh, fortunately, we, we have already picked up a few seniors that didn't have the exemption and a few uh, seniors that were in the basic star which is the enhanced star. So even though that wasn't the point of the postcard, uh, it, it did stop. So little by little, we're getting more people in the program they need to be in. Great, well, thank you. And just uh, so yep. you know, this is a continual requirement. So we'll probably have to budget for it next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, even though the county's paying for it this year. This year, next year. I don't know, that, that's a precedent. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. And um, we will move on now to um, town clerk reports. Uh, has Town clerk has circulated reports from the planning, zoning, and building departments. And um, Tilly, as tax collector, do you have a report? Yeah, I just, I just wanted to share that all the tax bills went out January 17th. And so far, we've collected 21%. Of the taxes due, 93 parcels were paid in person and 304 were paid through the mail so far. Yeah, with with the the senior the senior exemptions and the tax bills and so on, town hall has been very busy <laughs> the last last few days. Um, okay, um, I don't know if we have a report from the zoning review committee. Not at this time. Progress maybe, is being made. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe in March, it might be a good time for that. Um, the next item on the agenda 
um, is the is discussion of the formation of the town wastewater district. This is uh, this is a really important project for the town, the village, the community. We have been talking about the need for sewer for a wastewater system for years. In fact, uh, there have been efforts over decades uh, going back uh, to get to this point. But it's fair to say that we've made more progress uh, in the last three or four years, <clears throat> both the village and the town, uh, trying to get as organized as possible to, um, to get a wastewater system. The basic concept of, of a sewer system would be that it would be owned and operated by the village. The village is where a sewer plant would be and they would create a sewer district in the village. And separately, the town would create a wastewater district. And we have been working with, uh, with the engineers, Ty and Bond, uh, on this project, they're also working with the village, so they're they are knowledgeable about both sides of it, and uh, they have created a uh, a a plan, essentially a plan of attack, uh, for how the town would form its district. The town's wastewater district would be the boulevard. It would be a hundred percent commercial properties. Uh, so. It's very important to understand that's really what we're focused on. Um, the town spread out over miles and miles does not lend itself to a wastewater system. But uh, when the town down the road, when the town has formed a wastewater district and approved it, and Warren can talk about this a little bit, um, eventually the town's wastewater system hooks up to the village's one and it becomes one. But it is similar in a way to the water district. We have a, the town has a water district, even though we get our water from the village. Um, so there's a there are many many steps. Uh, we won't try and go through all of them tonight. Uh, it's a daunting project. This is not for the faint of heart, um, but it is really essential to the economic future of our town. Uh, people who have Commercial sites in the town, which are dependent on septics. Um, septic systems don't really look at expansion. They don't look at uh, growing their businesses, bringing in more job opportunities, uh, or even creating uh, have more housing uh, because of the need for a wastewater system. So it's something that um, I know, I think the whole board feels strongly about, but I know we've got a lot of work to do. So. Maybe in broad strokes, Warren, you could just describe sure. the overall what we have to do. I'll, I'll try. It's, it's complicated, but uh, <laughs> uh, you're, you're correct. They're going to be uh, the village uh, is going to be creating a, uh, a a district in the village pursuant to the village law, which is different from the town law. Um, we have two options for creating our portion of the uh, our own district, which will connect with the village's district and we'll have an intermunicipal agreement with the village and the village will be operating in the, 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 uh, the entire district. Um, we have uh, some decisions to make um, in that there are two ways of proceeding with the formation of the uh, district in the town um, under uh, article 12 and uh, 12A of the town law. One is the uh, article 12 is what we call the petition method. And you were right, I double checked. Uh, uh, in order to initiate the, uh, uh, the petition to move forward, uh, it would be the signatures of the owners of at least one half of the aggregate assessed value of the taxable property within the proposed district. It's different from the voting if there is a permission for referendum or voting for the actual formation of the district. Um, so uh, the other method would be on the town's own volition, uh, where the town would start the process. So. Uh, we have received a map plan and report that's been created by Ty and Bond. That's the first step in the process. Uh, the village has received their map plan and report from Ty and Bond. Um, the map plan and report has to be filed in the town clerk's office. I'm assuming that that's been done. If it's not, that, that should be done. Um, 
But in order to move forward with this, we're going to have to make a decision as to what um, method we're going to use, whether it be the petition method uh, or the town's own volition method. Um, there will be public informational meetings regardless of what uh, method we choose. Um, and uh, eventually there will be a public hearing um, and um, a, uh, which will provide even more information in more detailed form. Um, and then ultimately there would be a vote uh, to, to form the district. If we um, uh, choose the, the Article 12 petition method, um, it would not be subject to a permissive referendum. If we choose the other method, it would be subject to a permissive referendum, which would mean that a petition could be filed to require a vote on the formation of the district. Um, I mean, that's 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 it in a nutshell. We're going to be, uh, we have to make an initial decision. The board members should carefully review the map plan and report, which we've had. And I anticipate by the next meeting, um, we'll be in a position to make a decision on how we're going to move forward with this. And when that happens, I'll be preparing a resolution, uh, starting the process. And then there'll be a lot more information that will be disseminated to the public. Um, the, the votes uh, for all of this are really the, the uh, home the property owners within the district, not the entire town. So people should be aware of that fact. Uh, but at the public informational meeting and then the public hearing, uh, you'll get much more information, uh, which the entire public would be invited to on how this is all going to work and what the costs are going to be and how we're going to finance it. I would like just to just to uh, reiterate what you just said in the last bit. This applies to the commercial district on the boulevard on Route 44. They are the only properties which will be impact, which will be paying costs of the system. The rest of the town does not. So that's uh, it's an important uh, point. That's true. I, I, to I, mention. I, I double checked the map plan and report. We talked about 18 properties. There's actually 28, 27 properties. Okay. Uh, within the proposed district. Yeah, it's um, not it's not unlimited. It, it's not a huge it's not a huge district, uh, but it only uh, applies to commercial properties. Whereas in the village, I I believe the uh, there's a mix of commercial and residential properties. One of the one of the items which came up early in the discussions with Ty and Bond uh, was whether we were interested in having a wastewater system that went only as far as Kelsey Brook, which is just everybody knows is just this side of the Ford dealership, or whether we would want a wastewater district that would go the whole way to the Connecticut border. And we have uh, definitely, without uh, too much question, wanted to make sure that it went all the way to the Connecticut border. There are a lot of properties out there that have significant potential, both commercially and for housing. Uh, so anyway, I'm sure this is gonna be brought up at pretty much every meeting that we have this year, uh, certainly many of them, uh, but I just wanted to have a a um, discussion of that. And I don't know if any members of the board have any additional questions for Warren at this point. You will. Oh, yes. Yeah. Later. <laughs> okay, the next item on this, and we have a lot of discussion items tonight. And um, um, uh, this is uh, something that is not on our radar at the moment here in the town, but it is something having just gone to a meeting of all the supervisors and mayors of the county that is on the radar of other towns. And this is the question of whether the town should have an ordinance regulating short-term rentals, uh, Airbnbs, Verbos, and so on, other companies. And the, the concern which um, some other towns have, but not all, is that they can be, if they, are in residential neighborhoods and um, and they're rented out a lot. Uh, resident, you know, the regular residents can find themselves with people right in their neighborhood on a weekend uh, in a party mood um, that they don't know, and uh, sometimes creating a public nuisance, uh, trash, noise, etc. Uh, so there, some towns have moved to create ordinances in which 
um, people who have properties that they would like to um, have available to people through Airbnb and Verbo and so on, uh, have to register with the town, have to meet certain standards, uh, pay a fee, um, and have a license essentially, which is gets renewed or denied, um, and which is subject to uh, the building department's uh, inspection and so on. An additional wrinkle is, <clears throat> it's not a small wrinkle, is whether uh, towns would require them to be owner occupied uh, or whether they can be absentee uh, owners uh, in which this, it's an empty house and people can be there by themselves. And I think if I've read the ads right, that Verbo is entirely the latter. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, so some of the towns feel very strongly about that. They want that uh, these be only owner occupied other towns. Um, for instance, I think Pauling, who I, I know has a uh, an ordinance on this uh, is, is both. Um, Warren, you've seen other towns uh, wrestling with this. Yeah. What is your- We're wrestling with it in the town of Rhinebeck right now, or uh, have done some studies and had some uh, draft proposals and recommendations, which we're considering. And uh, the, the most contentious issue is uh, whether or not to require that it be owner occupied. Um, and uh, how we do that, uh, there are lots of other issues. Um, I, I don't know if it's been a, a big problem in, in the town of Northeast, but a lot of, there's been a lot of complaints at Rhinebeck about uh, 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 a lot of illegal short-term rentals because if you don't have a short-term rental law um, and you uh, rent a, rent your property on a short-term uh, basis through Airbnb and another or another similar type of uh, uh, organization, uh, theoretically you're in violation of the of the zoning law because it's not permitted. So um, it's you know the town would have to make a decision as to whether. It really is a, a substantial problem, and we have to consult with our zoning enforcement office to see if they've had any complaints, and our police to see if they've had any complaints, and uh, take the temperature of the uh, of the community and make a decision as to uh, whether or not we want to embark on on short term rental law. I don't know. Yeah. You, you're working on an amendment to the zoning law. Whether you're going to have time to. <laughs> incorporate that into the new zoning law, but if we don't do that before, yeah. that would be one of the considerations of the zoning well, <laughs> well, this is one of those, it's, it's just something I put on the agenda really simply to, uh, for the public to know that we've, we've heard of it, mm -hmm. uh, we're aware of it. Um, I We have not, I haven't had, I don't think I've had a single complaint uh, of a property owner in the town. Um, I'm aware of, I think, some issues in the village, but in the town, uh, I haven't, and I don't believe that Amenia, Pine Plains, or Stanford, uh, that any of those towns right around us or Milan have um, an ordinance on this. I think it's much more Western Duchess at this point. Yeah, we don't We're, have one in Pine Plains. So we haven't had a lot of complaints in uh, in Pine Plains. Uh, it's it's yeah. contentious in some communities, not in all communities. No. Yeah. So anyway, we just wanted to um, the board to have heard about it. Uh, so if we do hear about it, it won't come as a as a fresh topic. Uh, the next item that we'd like to talk about is the um, master plan, bicycling and walking uh, plan, which was prepared um, by uh, our our Climate Smart Task Force, um, led by Kathy Chow. And um, this is an action which was uh, recommended by the, uh, by the Climate Smart Program of New York State, which was for the town to have a, um, a plan for, for bicycling and walking. And the goal is to encourage, uh, encourage bicycling and walking as an alternative means of transportation. And uh, we have, uh, well, the task force has prepared a master plan, which uh, the board has seen, was reviewed. We received it last year, we looked at it, 
Um, and uh, I think it's important for us to take a second look at it and uh, make sure that we're familiar with it and add our input um, if we have any um, on uh, different aspects of it. So I just wanted to, I distributed it to the board um, I've invited their comment. Uh, one of the items which uh, has come up is, and something that as somebody who's bicycled a fair bit around here, um, is whether the, our master plan should encourage people to bicycle on Route 22. Uh, it is, for some reason, which I don't understand, on the state's list of bicycling routes. Um, I think that's the craziest idea I've ever heard. Um, you know, it's, Route 22 is a high-speed road with a lot of big trucks, including particularly a lot of extra wide things that have to have a vehicle in front of them telling people to get out of the way. Um, so I'd like to hear the board's view on that. My view is that it should be, you know, we've got beautiful roads in the town. Uh, we have the, the rail trail, which is uh, one of the great selling attractions of our town. And one of the things which people point to is something that has made Millerton such a destination. Um, we don't lack for beautiful scenic roads that are much safer than the week 22. Um, and I'm interested to hear you know, the, the board and if there are other things which you've had a chance to look at in here. Uh, another, another suggestion in here is, um, uh, I believe I saw it, is to reduce the speed on Red Pond Road. Uh, that's, you know, having gone through this uh, with Winchell Mountain Road, it's quite an ordeal to reduce speeds on road on our town roads even that's a county road uh, because you have to get the state's permission to do it and uh, that takes uh, as i was referring to forever but um that would lower the speed limit up as far as rug pond and uh, you know one can understand the rationale behind that is to let people bicycle up to rug pond uh, at uh, on a road that is limited to 45, let's say, instead of 55. Um, but anyway, I'm interested in hearing what's from the board on the plan, if you've had a chance to look at it, and if you have any suggestions. Ralph. Gone over this plan umpteen times. <laughs> Good. And uh, I want to say that the goal of the Climate Smart Initiative is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And I, I'm going through this and I'm saying, you know, we have a bike trail, and that is the perfect way for people to uh, see the area and use their bicycle safely. Um, you know, in this area with topography being the way it is, um, you you really can't use your bike uh, to commute. Um, you use it as a recreational activity. That's my feeling anyway. And what better way to bike than to use the rail trail? It's relatively flat um, and straight and affords uh, people the opportunity to enjoy the surroundings uh, and to get some, um, uh, some movement in their body. Uh, in Europe, a, a lot of cities, um, because they're dense, population is dense, um, in some cities, they use bicycles to commute. We don't, and I don't see, I don't see how we can say that while I support the initiatives of the Climate Smart, I don't see anything here that we should do. I really don't. Um, I, I don't see a, a bike path from the rail trail to Eddie Collins or the bike trail to uh, Weebatuck. I, I don't see that as you're not commuting. 
Um, we we travel by automobile in this area because it's it's a it's a big area, and it's not level. So um, that's my feeling. As far as you know, walking is concerned, uh, the village has done a remarkable job, I think, in upgrading uh, all of the sidewalks. That's one of the benefits that we have in, in Millerton is beautiful sidewalks. Um, so th that's that's my feeling. Um, I, I don't think there's anything here that would require us as a, a town government to uh, get involved with. That's just my own feeling. Other thoughts? One thing I would say about that is that this is aspirational. It is not an enforcement plan. It is saying certain things are nice, they would be desirable. Um, yeah, I don't want to see kids trying to commute to Weaver Tuck School crossing Route 22 without a bridge. Uh, you know, there, there are certain things which just are, uh, don't make, you know, particular sense at this point. But I think what this does is give uh, us the opportunity to imagine ways in which bicycling, whether recreational or uh, whether there might be somebody who might live up on, uh, you know, Boston Corners might bicycle down. I know there are people who have bicycled to town and, and some who even have commuted, um, maybe not in wintertime, but there are. And uh, this is really a uh, just a statement that uh, we encourage people to use their feet and to get out and to, um, to bicycle. And it is a way of talking about different aspects of it. Um, what I think, <clears throat> I'd like to do is to take the opportunity to um, bring it back to the board in March when we've had a chance to really look at it a little bit more. Um, I think it's a good document. Um, I think there, are, you know, I want to make sure that there's things in here which are just not uh, appropriate for our town at this particular time. Uh, you know, the uh, Bicycling on 22 is the one that really obviously gets me. But um, I, you know, I would also like to say that a lot of work went into this by people who volunteered their time to think about it. And um, it is something that I certainly want to bring back to the board. I'd like to see us, um, you know, approve it and uh, feel good about it. Uh, I think it's a good statement of how we feel about recreation. We live in a in a part of the world that is so so beautiful for getting outdoors um, that to do that outside of an automobile, I think is is really praiseworthy. So uh, we'll have a chance for more discussion of it, I think, you know in March, and unless anybody else has any further comment on it, we can. We can invite that. Um, okay. With that, uh, we have a public comment period. Um, and uh, we invite public comment. Uh, Rich Dalton. Uh, two issues on the short-term rental. Um, quick look on Airbnb. There shows six houses between now and the summer that are available on Airbnb throughout the town, not the village. The village has more than that. Um, it doesn't seem like it's a huge problem. And as it's, it's discussed, I don't want this to become a straw man for, you know, resentment that people are putting so many houses off the rental market. And these houses are barely booked. So people may be trying to do it, but it's not viable apparently to do that. Um, the other thing is on the bike and walking plan. I'm gonna some of you know that I am 
related to much more information too. I may have some input. I'm speaking for none of them right now, but I do think that um, parking lots with older amenities is kind of out of scale, out of scale here. And I also hope that the public comments that are being collected that you haven't seen yet uh, get to you before you just bring it up in March. Thank you. Uh, Sam, you made your hand at Sam Bussell. Yeah, just advice relating to the uh, Airbnb and how many units we have or that, that we know of in the town and the village and, and, and concern about it in the village in terms of taking up uh, properties that otherwise could be rented for buy up for people who are desperate for a house. I think if you did a study, I, I think the county had a, a number, I don't know whether how much trouble we had to go through to identify the actual one. And I think that would be useful to really focus. That's something that's something we can find out. Bill oh, Fish. Boy, I just promoting the expo program for okay. a week from Saturday. I encourage you all to come and get everybody else to come too. I've had a lot of success in getting people to support it. Uh, we'll see who shows up. It's a long period of time, but but it's just to come and go and and uh, and talk to the people who know something about it. We all can be there. Thank you. Thank you. No fish. And I want to comment on the same things that Rich did, um, maybe a little differently. Um, so I I know that you know your the board's main concern based on your comments for seem to be that there's a nuisance factor associated with their BMDs. And potentially there are, but as Sam said, regardless of whether they're ever a nuisance, they do take uh, potential rental properties off the market. And, and as we've been discussing for, for many months now, there's a housing crisis here. Um, I know that if I wanted to, I could rent my my the little house I used to live in um, for you know for a week um, during the summertime and get as much money as I get for a month right now. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't think it's right, but I think there are a lot of people who would do that, and um, I, I think it would be good to try to um, to limit that when you know there's such a need here for for permanent housing. Um, with respect to the, um, the, 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 the walking, biking thing, I haven't seen it yet, I'm, but I'm hoping I can find it. It's on the town, board, on town website. It's on the, uh, Millerton, the Climate Smart Millerton uh, website. Okay, I'll get it out there. Um, I don't know if it mentions anything about the sidewalk district on the Boulevard district, but um, this is something we've talked about in the review committee. And you know, if we're going to have a vibrant um, boulevard district and we're going to encourage people to walk there, we're going to need sidewalks. And there's two ways that we can do that. One way is to um, piecemeal install um, sidewalks as properties are developed. So you might have you know a sidewalk you know uh, 700 feet up the road, but you have to walk on you know you have to walk on the grass to get there. Or we can create a sidewalk district to put sidewalks in. Um, and I think that that would um, that would serve two purposes at one time. It would help um, fulfill this need for for more walkable town <coughs> at the same time as it would be um, really required uh, infrastructure for the boulevard district. So I hope at some point you guys will talk about uh, sidewalk district. Great. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, thank you all. Um, now we're going to get into the really exciting part of the agenda. Uh, I have a budget adjustment, uh, number 11, 2022. Um, <clears throat> a fund, general town wide, a, an expense increase of $1,300. $1,393 less a revenue increase of $1,393. Could I have a motion to approve the budget adjustment? So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
opposed? Thank you. Thank you. And I have several abstracts. And just so that people in the audience know, since we have more people here tonight, um, and by the way, a reporter, from, a new reporter for the Millerton News, Emily Edelman, who I should have introduced right in the beginning, but we're delighted to have you here tonight. Um, uh, these are, when I first went on the board and I heard these things being read at the end of the meeting, I kept thinking, <laughs> what are these things? Abstracts and so on. Anyway, they're pretty simple. They are a the adding up the various bills that the town has had during the previous month. And um, according to which fund they're in and according to which period of time they're in. And every bill that the town gets and is approved for payment is approved by the supervisor and two more board members. So for every bill that's approved and which are summed up in these abstracts, three members of the board have approved each one individually. Uh, so I have an abstract dated December 30th, 2022. Uh, totaling $62,745.69, broken down as follows. A fund, $3,370.23. B fund, $2,139.99. DB fund, $7,932.10. Capital projects H1, $36,091.17. Uh, ARPA, $10,976, TNA2 escrow, $2,236.20. Could I have a motion to approve the abstract? So I move. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Next, got it. Aye. Okay. Um, Next, got it. Second. All right. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And I will now pass this around for your signature. I have an abstract dated February 9th, 2023, totaling $153,295.47, broken down as follows. Uh, A fund, $43,499.28. B fund, $555.47. DB fund, $50,876.99. Capital projects H1, $58,107.50. Payroll TNA, TNA $256.23. Could I have a motion to approve the abstract? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? Approved? Which, that one. And I have a special abstract dated January 25, 2023, totaling $884.87, broken down as follows. A fund, $884.87. But I have a motion to approve that. Abstract. So moved. Second. <laughs> All right, Meg. It's yours. Got it, Meg. Let's be our purple. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Screen is changed. Okay. All right. Well, it's got a mind of its own. <laughs> Um, okay, well, we're at the end of the setting. I had to change it. Oh, there we go. Uh, there are two sets of minutes which have been distributed to the board. There are minutes of January 12th, 2023, and minutes of January 19th, special meeting of 2023. Give us copies, PMA. Okay. 
Um, did I have a motion to approve? I'm going to do the, each of them separately. Uh, a motion to approve the minutes of January 12th, 2023. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And could I have a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting, special meeting of January 19th, 2023? So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Hmm. Yes, uh, the voucher committee for the month of March will be Ralph Fidelli and Meg Winkler. You're getting thrown into the deep end. <laughs> okay. Um, with that, we're going to conclude um, the regular meeting. I would like to uh, ask for an executive um, session with our council after this meeting for the purpose of discussing the purchase or sale of town property. Uh, with that, I would like to ask for a motion to uh, enter into executive session. Second. Okay, we'll take a few minutes to, uh, before we go into that, uh, to say goodbye to everybody. Um, I would like to uh, ask Bob Stevens to stay. We can vote on that motion. Oh, vote. Um, okay, we're going to vote, take a vote on going into executive session. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and we're going to just wait for a minute. I'm going to turn off the computer.